And welcome everybody right here to the Paranormal View on the Para-X Radio Network. I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Those here in the chat room and those listening from around the world. We love each and every one of you and glad you could take time out to be with us tonight. Uh, if you are listening from somewhere other than in the chat room, feel free to come right on over by going to the Paranormal View. That's wrong. <laughs> I messed that one the up, heck? didn't I? <laughs> wow. Where are we going here? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, you can go to uh, para-x.com and click on the live chat, and you will be in with everybody, uh, which is probably laughing their heads off right now. So, uh, with that, want to th- uh, thank everybody and uh, had a great uh, weekend so far. Uh, been fairly nice. We had some storms Friday night and a little bit of flooding, but uh, seems to all be uh, cleared out now and had a real nice day today. Uh, mm-hmm. We have a great guest with us tonight, and um, before we jump over to our guest, tonight we have with us Cat Cloco. Or better known as she who can't mute her cell phone. Oh, no. Oh, no. And and we have Barbara Duncan. Yes, I am here. Okie dokie. And we have Jeffrey Gould. Hello, hello. I may be actually audibly intelligible tonight. Woohoo! Yes, he has his headset and microphone on tonight. So everything's working great. So Skype is actually being cooperative. That is great. Uh, with that then, uh, Jeff, why don't you introduce our guest tonight? Yeah, well, tonight's guest is Bruce Tango of uh, TAPS, an occasional guest on the TV series Ghost Hunters, a highly decorated and retired police officer from Elizabeth, New Jersey. <laughs> uh, Bruce was the youngest member to ever join the force at 19 years old during his 25 plus years, of which he was a trained sniper with a SWAT team. He's been interested in the far more important subject of the paranormal, and he's been hunting for ghosts since he was 16 years old. Bruce, having had a near-death experience, uh, is searching for answers to many questions involving ghosts and the paranormal. So Bruce has been seen many times on Ghost Hunters investigating with his son and the rest of the team. And so he's going to have some great stories to share tonight. Uh, So welcome back, Bruce Tango. Hi, Gary. How's everybody doing? We're all great, and so glad that uh, you was able to stop by and uh, spend a couple hours with us tonight. Glad to be here, guys. Glad to be here. Uh, Just to hear you laugh, Henry. That's why I'm here. Just so I can listen to you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you can hear it. You can don't, hear it. Don't, don't muffle it, Henry. Get it out, pal. Cause, <laughs> you know, it's contagious, so that's what it is good. You you get to hear a lot of that on Rock with a Shock, don't you? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah it's, uh, he has a lot of fun with your ass, Henry. But that's uh, not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Now, um, one of the things we're going to talk about tonight is uh, the DVD that uh, you made, uh, dealing with uh, something that happened to you when you were a uh, boy of about five or six. And the uh, name of the DVD is called The Steering Man. Um, I I liked it. It was very uh, well put together. Um, it uh, You don't really want to watch it in the dark by yourself. Um, but uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's really good. Uh, very interesting. So uh, we're going to let you uh, in a little while... Tell people how they can get the DVD if they would like to. And we're going to talk about uh, what actually took place. So why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how it all started? Well, I was born in Elizabeth. I I, uh, lived in the projects in in Elizabeth. And uh, uh, one evening I... uh, I, uh, I woke up. I don't know what. I don't know if there was a noise or anything, but I woke up, and at the foot of my bed was a uh, uh, about a six foot uh, a male figure, uh, 
uh, staying sort of catty corner to me and uh, uh, just staring at me uh, with, with a grin on his face. Now, with that being said, uh, uh, I always tell people if I was making this story up, I wouldn't add this fact, but uh, the truth be told, his face was red. He had very dark eyes. It was very, very frightening. And uh, what I did is I, uh, I covered my head. I started crying and praying. I asked him to go away. And uh, it, uh, I actually had three encounters, uh, from my memory, within about a year, uh, a year's period. Uh, the second encounter was uh, very similar to the first. And the third was a little different. Uh, 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 again, I was walking. Uh, all, all three encounters were in my bedroom. And uh, the third one, when I woke up, I saw him come from the corner of the room, walk uh, again to the foot of the bed, stand where he normally sta stands. And uh, uh, this time I got out of bed uh, very quickly. I ran out of my door, ran out of my room, and I took a light to go down the hall uh, to the bathroom. Now, my mom and dad uh, always left the bathroom light on. They use it as a night light, and I did the same, actually, for my, my children, too. And uh, I sat on the toilet uh, for about 45 minutes to an hour, crying. I was very scared. And uh, at one point in time, when I, when I got up enough of nerve, I went back down into the hallway, and uh, I took a left into the room and just to find that he was still standing there. And, uh, and indeed he did. You saw what he was doing, Henry. And what I did is I turned right back around, went ran down to the bathroom, and uh, I actually fell asleep uh, until my father woke me up in the morning. Uh, I was sitting on the toilet. He, he asked me what I was doing because it was obvious I wasn't going to the bathroom. And uh, he told me to get to bed. And uh, I, I uh, you know, as I've explained many, many, many times, is uh, when I tell a story, I know the first thing that, pops in people's mind is why I didn't wake up my uh, mom and dad. And uh, as I always explain without getting too personal, is that, uh, and this is going to sound funny, but it actually isn't, uh, I was more afraid of my father than I was of that entity. I was afraid of my father, and put, putting it mildly, you know, my father was a very tough individual, very harsh man, and uh, uh, like I said, I would have rather dealt uh, with the fear that I had with this with this thing I was uh, saying than uh, you know uh, tell my father. That's it, uh, basically. <laughs> now, when when you first saw that man, when you woke up and first saw him uh, staring at you. Did it look like a man, or did it look more like uh, some sort of an apparition? No, it, it was a full body. It was a man. You know, uh, you know actually, I wasn't sure what it was at first until I, I focused, and, and uh, it was a man standing there. And it actually looked uh, very close to what you saw uh, in the movie. Uh, uh, um, uh, as far as, well, Mike Kosky from the, the Walking Dead, a good friend of mine from Atlanta, I flew him in to uh, do the part. And uh, because he had a lot of the same features as, as what I saw as a child. And uh, as you see what happens in the film when we did the re uh, recreation and, uh, and when we, uh, uh, when I had this, the, the police sketch artist a draw. That is exactly what you see at the end there, Henry, is exactly what I saw uh, when I was a child. Now, Bruce, you, uh, you know about the um, uh, shadow people also referred to as men with hats? Men with what? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Men with hats. They're wearing like broad, uh, broad rimmed hats. Yeah. Yeah, well, this guy was wearing a hat. Wearing a hat? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was yeah, wondering... 
Yeah, they normally show up in times of like crisis situations. And I'm wondering, um, do you think that a lot of it had to do with the um, uh, climate that was around your house at the time? Well, I, in theory, uh, yes. You know, obviously a lot of people, you know, have asked me what I think uh, happened and have to talk to the people and knowing what I've learned over the many years uh, being involved in that and all of that. Uh, most people agree because it, it, when you watch when you watch the, the film, uh, you see that nothing good was happening uh, with the family back then. And I think with me, uh, nothing with my father, uh, my mother. Uh, there's a scene where you know, my mom loses uh, the baby, which would have been my second sister. And uh, uh, as you, uh, uh, if you watch the film, you could uh, you'll, you'll see that my 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 sister, who I'm the oldest in my family, uh, and now I have three sisters. The one sister that was was there uh, a year younger than me, her name was Robin. And uh, it wasn't until I started making this film that I finally, because I didn't tell anyone except my grandfather uh, about this incident. But once my sister found out uh, and we started talking, she actually uh, probably seen him too. But she didn't see his face, but she saw him walking out of uh, uh, out of the pasture doorway and towards the, the window. So, uh, you know, that that was uh, something to find out after all the years that my sister... Uh, can you uh, guys uh, hear anything? Something. Yeah. Yeah, his sister saw it as well. Yeah. Uh, something happened to me. Uh-oh. Ooh. Hold on here. We can hear him fine. Yeah, okay. yeah we can hear him. Yeah, Are I have. listening intently. It was all of a sudden, everything just went real quiet. I could hear you, but it was like way in the background. So, okay. Everyone else can hear him. It's it's working now. <sighs> okay. Are you still with us, Bruce? I, I believe so. How am, I, am I coming in? Yeah, yeah you're, you're yeah. doing fine now. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. Bruce, uh, does anybody in your family uh, see ghosts? Um, is there a history of... of um, mediumship or uh, psychic ability in your family? That's a good question. I've been asked that quite often, but actually, no. Uh, nobody in my family uh, that I know of, especially mom, my mom and dad, you know, really don't talk about ghosts. Uh, uh, my mom or dad didn't have any abilities whatsoever, or, you know, and back then there was, there was very rarely even a show about a ghost, except for, you know, if, uh, some of the chiller theater type stuff, but, uh, but, uh, you know, the, the, nothing like that. And as far as the history of the, the building, the, it was a project, and uh, uh, it was built in 1940. I was, I was born in 54, but I could not find anything uh, uh, that would uh, uh, suggest that uh, this thing that I saw uh, came from uh, any anything that had happened prior to me being born there or anybody else living there. And nobody in your family no. plays with Ouija boards, et cetera? No, no, no. Okay. No, I mean, uh, I, mean I, I actually played with them a few times when I was in my teens, you know, with guys and girls, you know, you try to get a kiss or something like that, but that's, what they were used for the full work. But not at that, no, no, there was nothing like that in my family, you know, uh, nothing whatsoever that would uh, even lead, lead towards There was no discussion about it, nothing like that. Now, actually, I was wondering, Bruce, if you had noticed any paranormal activity happening before the sighting in the house or anything afterwards. Uh, in the, in that in that apartment, no, no, yeah. that was the only things. Uh, well, there, if you watch the film, there was a couple things that happened when there was nothing at the door. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Have you seen? You know, if it, if the film will, will show you that uh, there was nothing at at the door in the middle of the night. Uh, 
and my father, you know, uh, got so angry because he kept on getting out of bed and nobody would be at the door. Finally, he stood by the door with a baseball bat, and when the door, when the door, somebody knocked on the door, he opened it real quick, and actually nobody was there. And there was another time where uh, I was yelled at by my father because I had baseball cards and stuff all over my room. He made me clean and uh, clean the room and go to bed. And uh, when I woke up in the middle of the night, uh, there was baseball that in the middle of the night. When I woke up in the morning, there was baseball cards all over the place. And I know I'm not the one that did that. So, But this is all during that time. But prior mm-hmm. to these uh, encounters... I don't really remember anything, you know, it it was a very, uh, it was, there was no good memories from, from that time. Uh, nothing good was happening. Uh, And to, you know, just to probably answer a question that you're bound to ask me is that, uh, uh, this thing that I was seeing probably was, uh, uh, thriving or causing all the bad things that were happening. The, uh, probably was enjoying my fear because mm-hmm. uh, this this entity did not touch me uh, or did not say anything to me. Uh, but uh, he just scared the hell out of me. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of bad things happening within the family. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's, that's the theory we have because, to be honest, you know, nobody really knows. Uh, everybody could guess. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, and theorize, but the best guess or best theory is that he was causing these things to happen, or he was thriving on them, uh, mm-hmm. if you will. Mm-hmm. Now, Henry, you have a question. Uh, yes, I know uh, you was always afraid to say anything to your dad, but did you ever try to say anything to your mother? No, I, I was explaining that uh, my mom and my mom uh, protected me a lot, and, and actually, uh, uh, let me just let me just say this because it'll come out sooner or later. There's a lot more to this story, and uh, there's a lot that I it's very very personal, and uh, but I'm not prepared and I'm not willing to talk about a lot of the things. I don't know if I ever will. There's a, there's a select few people that know everything involved with this story, but I, I'm not going to talk about it. But, uh, uh, what was the, I'm sorry, I'm going off in tangents. What was the question again? <laughs> I said, did you ever try to ask your mom or say anything to your mom about it? Well, well I would have. And if it was just my mom, I would have. But I was afraid that my mom might mention it to my father, ah. and I, I didn't. I didn't want to uh, do that. I didn't even tell my sister. That's why I said I was amazed when I found out when I was when uh, we were making this film that she too had had uh, a couple of experiences. It was it was mind boggling to me, and uh, the only person I ever told was my grandfather. Gramps. He was probably the closest person to me in this world. He was the one of the greatest people I've ever met, met or known. Uh, and and uh, when I told him, uh, he he had the normal reaction. You know, I used to call him Gramps. He used to call me Butch. And when I told him what was going on, he looked at me and he, and I remember even at that young age how how upset he was and worried. But he told me, he said, but you were probably dreaming. And I said, no, Gramps, I, I wasn't dreaming. I, I really saw this. I didn't have the heart to tell him that I'd seen him. At that point, I think it was two times that I had seen him. The third time didn't even uh, happen yet. So he just gave me a hug. He told me, uh, you know, to make sure I say my prayers and that, you know, that I was probably dreaming that worry. Don't worry about it. And, uh, you know, and to let him know if anything else happens. It did, but I never told Gramps. And uh, I asked my grandfather not to say anything to anybody, uh, to my mom or my father. I know he wouldn't have told my father, okay, because he actually knew how my father was. And uh, But I told him not to tell my mom because I was, again, afraid that mom would tell my father. Right. And, uh, and Gramps, 
Gramps kept his word. He never told anybody. So, uh, when, uh, when all this was going on, um, did you, uh, did you ever, uh, are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? (laughs) I think I'm here. (laughs) Yeah, we can hear you. Or this is the best EVP ever. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, when uh when all this was taking place or i should say before had uh you ever been uh, scared of anything uh ghosts or anyone saying something Hello? About... can you hear me uh oh oh no can you hear him can you hear Uh-oh. me bruce? bruce bruce can you hear henry hmm can you hear any of us bruce can you hear us Wait a minute. Let me Come see. Come back here. to us, Bruce. Yeah, he's still he's gone on. into the light. No. Don't go into the light. Come back to the paranormal view. All right. He, he's in the chat room. Type to him. See if he can hear us. Can you hear us? I hear laughing. Yeah, I hear laughing. Yeah. I bet Bruce hit the mute button on his phone. I I won't I won't assume that, but. Oh my! <laughs> well, when Whenever Bruce we... comes, when Bruce comes back, he will be singing <laughs> Rigoletto. Yes, <laughs> Aria. Uh, yeah, Hello? yeah. Are you Bruce? there, Bruce? Bruce. Hello. Yeah, can Bruce. Hear, can you? Uh oh. Can you hear us? Hmm. They got to be mm-hmm. something wrong. Hello, guys. Guess that's a that's a no. Hang on, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Uh, Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Yep. Can you hear us? Okay, I I got you now. I was on headphones, and I don't know what the hell happened, but (laughs) something (laughs) did. I don't don't know. (laughs) Every time I do an interview about this subject, some strange things happen, but here I am. Uh, As long as you can hear me, I can hear you pretty good. Oh, well, that's that's good. that is not unprecedented to have people yeah. talking about the paranormal and have Skype go a little nuts. Yeah, yeah, that's actually fairly normal. Well, also, right before that, did anybody else hear? Uh, no, but I heard laughing. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I heard the laughing. Okay. Yeah, and I was just like, hmm, where that, that, is that, that coming from? I think from? That, that's uh, on Bruce's end. Okay. Yeah. Well, I will. No, I wasn't, la- I wasn't laughing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not that time. Uh, Okay, we got no one in the background laughing. Okay, ah, I was going to mention lovely. that I I am broadcasting from the lovely haunted house in Indiana that does have a hat man that haunts it. Oh, ah, right. okay. So, so we're in familiar territory at least over here. So, so maybe it's doing something. Well, that's that's possible also. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, let's get and I done forgot what it was I was asking, but. Uh, oh no! <laughs> so have I. <laughs> Let's. Uh, when when you uh, did you decide that you wanted to make this into a, a movie, or did you mention it to somebody and they wanted to do it? Well, I, I had thought about it. I had mentioned it, and then Brett McGinnis, who directed this, uh, yeah, Brett is is a good friend and. Uh, if you guys remember my my son's show and Steve Gonzalez, their show uh, uh, Ghost Hunters Academy, that was uh, uh, was on that show as a contestant, and I had met uh, Brett at an event where um, my son Steve and I were at. Uh, I think we met the Hillview, uh, actually, and. Uh, we became friends, and then Brett called me, and he said he thought it would be a great idea uh, to uh, film uh, a police sketch artist uh, drawing uh, what I had seen as a child, this entity, uh, the staring man. And uh, we, we talked, and uh, I was a little hesitant, you know, because I didn't know if I wanted to get... Because you know, somewhat the story is somewhat personal, 
And then uh, after some talking with Brent and a few other people, it wind up uh, uh, going into a full-blown documentary. And, uh, you know, there was, like I said, there was a lot of work involved in it. Uh, Brent did a fantastic job. Uh, I call him like a, he's like a little genius. He uh, is very good, uh, you know, in the tech part of it and editing and such. And uh, he did a great job of, uh, uh, putting putting the, the film together, you know, uh, there, there was a lot of work involved. Uh, I did the casting. Uh, I found the locations, and you know, I, I did the uh, wheeling and dealing to to get back into that apartment, which was sort of like a last minute type uh, uh, coup, if you will. And uh, uh, you know, that that uh, worked out really well, as you know, in the film. Um, I think, uh, what we're going to do is probably take a, a break here in just a second. And, uh, oh. because we got lots more to talk about. And one of the things that, uh, somebody had been talking about or mentioning was somebody was saying that Bruce was supposed to sing or something like that. Were you supposed yeah. to sing? That, that was only joking. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I woke up with a little short suit this morning, so I, I can't I can't help these out. Oh. Uh, but, but you know, if I do, if I sing Harry, then I got to go into a different, altogether different uh, 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 direction. Oh. I have to give up the paranormal, and I'll be inundated with all kinds of appearances, with singing and everything, and I just. You know, then I'd have to get the songwriting and everything. I, I'm pooped. I'm 61 years old. You know, I don't want to. You know, the, the paranormal is enough for me. I, I don't want to. Then you'd have to charge people on the show and everything. I, right. Yeah. Uh, I understand. I, that's the same reason why I don't sing. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no, that was, I was only joking. I, 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 I tease people. I, I, I tell them, I, you know, I ask. I ask everybody, uh, all, all the interviews and all the radio shows I've done, and I ask them if I could sing, and they tell me, sure. And, but I joke around. I said, they'll save it for the last, and then they cut me off in the last minute. <laughs> you know? it's, like put, it's like putting the, the hook on me and the voice, you know? Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, uh, just one thing I want to remind you is during our breaks, the microphone will be live, so... Either just mute your phone or just don't say anything. Your choice on it. Um, with that, unless, uh, unless I have an argument argument with myself, I won't. Oh. I, won't I won't be talking. So all right then, no problem. <laughs> uh, with that, Cat, uh, you're going to take us out, and yes, we'll sir. let uh, CC bring us back. How's that sound? That sounds like a plan. So, everyone, you are listening to The Paranormal View with your hosts, Henry Foister, Jeffrey Gould, Barbara Duncan, and me, Kat Cloco. Tonight, we have a great returning guest, Bruce Tango. You may know him from Sci-Fi Channel's Ghost Hunter series. And now, uh, for his new documentary, The Staring Man. There's more to come with Bruce after the break. Welcome back, everyone, to The Paranormal View here on Para-X Radio. I want to thank all of you for joining us this evening. For our very special guest uh, tonight, Bruce Tango, police officer, ghost hunter, and now film producer. Um, Bruce, I'm wondering, with the actors that you had, uh, their prior dealings with the paranormal, and if they came out of the movie uh, with different thoughts than they had going in. Well, uh the the one person that I knew that uh, and it's a funny story uh, uh, my the friend I was talking about uh, uh, Riz Palesco uh, who worked with me uh, on the Elizabeth Police Department in Elizabeth New Jersey uh, my my first day on a job uh, I uh, I went into police headquarters I, I met the captain. And uh, a, a relatively new sergeant, uh, and which happened to be Rich Palesco. And after roll call, he pulls me on the side, and uh, he asked me, he says, are you Bill Chapman's uh, grandson? 
And I says, well, yes, I am. It so happens that uh, Rich uh, works for my grandfather, Gramps, uh, at one of the stores in Elizabeth uh, in, the, in the shipping department. And lo and behold, uh, we, we were talking about this several times, is uh, uh, Rich actually played my grandfather, Gramps, in the film. And he did a fantastic job. So it was a little ironic and... Uh, uh, but uh, uh, it was cool. He, he, we were talking about my grandfather. He and I uh, last week, and uh, he was telling me what, what a nice man he was and what he remembers. Is he says I never remember your grandfather cursing. <laughs> he says uh, he, he used to get upset once in a while, but uh, he never really uh, was a very friendly man and caring. But as far as answering your question, uh, Rich is the only one that had an interest in a paranormal uh, uh, that I know of. Uh, uh, everyone else were either was first time actors or 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 or, or, or interested in acting and were uh, involved in acting groups. But uh, Rich, when I first got on, uh, in after he approached me about my grandfather, we became friends, and then we found out that we both had an interest in the paranormal. So you're talking, I was uh, uh, 19 at the time, and, uh, you know, uh, that was just a couple of years ago. But uh, he's one of the guys that I take with me when I, uh, when I go check things out. Now, when... Uh... When you grew up, well, how long was it after you, this had took place before you guys moved to a different place? Uh, if I remember, Henry, after the last uh, encounter, it, it might have been within uh, maybe six months or so, uh, you know, the, the most a, a year. And, uh, you know, that was probably one of the happiest days of my life at that point in time. So did the atmosphere totally feel different when you moved? As far as I was concerned, yes. Uh, but, you know, my father was still the type of man that he was. But, uh, and, uh, but you know, to answer a question you may or may not have, I've never seen that entity again, uh, you know, for whatever reason, you know, uh, you know, but, uh, I actually would, you might find this crazy to hear, but, uh, I would actually, uh, love to meet him again. Uh, uh, you know, just, just to be able to, uh, you know, possibly try to communicate with him or ask him, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, after you, uh, moved and, uh, started getting older and you never had any more paranormal experiences, uh, but you said you started, I guess, into the paranormal around 16? Yes, I, I well, as soon as I was able to start, you know, I went to school, all I did was, uh, you know, uh, we didn't have computers and such. We spent a lot of time in the libraries. And all I read was ghost stories about Houdini. I used to debunk a lot of the seances and such. And anything about ghosts or hauntings, you know, I would read about. And then when I was able to uh, move about, my father was very strict. I wasn't able to. Uh, but there was times I would sneak out, go to cemeteries, either by myself, believe it or not, or, or with another friend. And uh, I would venture out to places that uh, there might be a story about seeing a ghost and such. But uh, uh, I've had many paranormal uh, experiences in my life, but that's that was that came after. Uh, it was later, you know, uh, right? You know, uh, you know, but. Uh, Nothing, nothing uh, uh, like that. 
Well, now, am, am, I, am I right on the, uh, like, like we were talking about that? That thing was probably uh, uh, an evil type entity. Uh, you know, like I said, even though he didn't say or do anything, but uh, in my lifetime, I've only come across something uh, a little bit, maybe twice. Well, actually, twice. I'm actually deal, dealing with something right now that has to do with a, a, a young autistic boy that was uh, that's been shoved down the stairs three times, breaking his arm three times. The last one being a compound fracture. Now, uh, hmm. being a police officer, the first thing I look into is uh, you know abuse in the family, and right. that's not the case. Hmm. And I'm not going to get into that story right now. That's right. A whole mm-hmm. other show somewhere down the line, mm-hmm. but uh, that, that's you know most people. You know Hollywood would make you think that the evil stuff happens quite often, uh, not as much as people may think, but it does happen. Oh, I, but in my lifetime, probably twice. I, I think that they make it like it happens a lot, just for ratings and and uh, TV and stuff like that. Um, uh, absolutely, absolutely. They got to sell their movies and everything. It does happen. Uh, believe me, it, it, it really does. And there's no doubt in my mind that this case that I'm, I'm, I'm working on now is is very, very interesting. It's mind boggling, uh, and the stories involved in this. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh, when I went to interview the people in the house, that this is uh, this is something that bad, but. Uh, I had things set up to go in there, and they changed their mind. Uh, but but uh, and I'm not going to force myself in there. Right. But uh, the neighbor who uh, asked me to come over and help uh, uh, said that uh, since they moved back in the house that day, they, they sleep every night with every light on in the house. And everybody in the house has had experiences, and they're not good. Hmm. And and that's the same house that you grew up in. No, no, this is a different oh, house. A different house. Oh, different this, story, is, yeah. this is for the other. Yeah, okay, but, uh, all right. Uh, well, I'm glad you know, that, that you got to forgive me, Henry, because I go off in tangents. That's the way my mind works. You know? oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But yeah, you got to forgive me. I, uh, you know, something pops in my head, I start talking. Well, at least yours works. Sometimes mine doesn't. Well, uh, I, <laughs> Oh, man. But I'm glad to hear that you're able to help them, though, Bruce, with this situation. Well, well yeah. I, 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 uh, they actually don't know who I am or I'm from mm-hmm. the show or anything, mm-hmm. which is good, which is good. But uh, when I interviewed these people, there was things that happened while I was there that was just uh, uh, just crazy. And I, I, I give you, I'll give you this much. And I talked about it uh, at a few lectures and stuff. But uh, I, was, I was there for about three hours asking questions. Uh, and uh, I was getting ready to leave. And the one, uh, uh, the mother, uh, uh, mother, grandmother, was standing to my right, uh, like uh, sort of blocking the doorway when I was getting ready to leave. Not doing it on purpose, I'm just saying how we were situated. And the daughter, who's probably around uh, 30 years old, was standing in front of me. And uh, I thought actually one of them passed when. I thought one of them farted, to be honest with you, because such a disgusting smell came over me. But I'm looking at them, and they're acting like, and I'm saying to myself, I said, you know, I know this sounds crazy, but if you pass when you would try to get away from me or walk away or something, they just stood there and then I'm saying, I hope they don't think it's me. But what I'm saying is, it was it, the smell came on and it lasted for a short time and it fit with everything that went in there, which is one of the indications that there's something bad there because the, the smell was putrid. Now, I've smelled many dead bodies in my time. Uh, being a police officer, I've had bodies that, that have rotted for months and months in, in the middle of July and August. So I know what a body smells like. This was between a body and 
anything you could think of, rotten eggs, sulfur, anything, that was absolutely terrible, but they were acting like they didn't smell anything. And I was ready to gag. You know, I have a pretty strong stomach. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I said, you know, let me, and, I, and I was trying to weasel my way towards the door because I was getting ready to leave. But it was like a parting shot, if you will, that, uh, you know, but uh, where this smell came, I, I don't know. But uh, it, it, this is a story I tell. But, uh, but there's a lot more to this and uh, things that are happening to everyone in the family especially the autistic child. Now, you may or may not know, you probably know that autistic children and special children are prime tar- targets for evil, for evil uh, entities. Now, why, why would that be? Why would they be targeted? Because uh, they, they, uh, the theory is that they thrive on their weakness, that they uh, uh. uh, You know, they're not as strong willed. Uh, Mm -hmm. They're they're very innocent, and Mm -hmm. uh, they they don't, for lack of a better expression, they don't know any better. Okay. Okay. And and they're just a prime target because of their uh, their, uh, them being special and their Mm -hmm. weaknesses. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. That's that. Most people, you know, autistic children, special children. Are, are, are often targeted by uh, 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 by by evil entities. Sometimes not all the time, but they are targets. Okay. Now, when when you uh, grew up and and joined the police force, uh, was that when you had somebody do the sketch of what you'd seen, or? Was that done mainly for the show? That was done for the show, I mean, Like I said, when Brett McGinnis called me, uh, we decided to do that along, uh, uh, expanded it into a full-blown documentary. Uh, I got a fellow, uh, I did some research. Uh, I was going to use a, a detective from my, uh, uh, from my department, but uh, he was away. So, uh, I called some friends uh, from the state police, and uh, they put me in contact with uh, 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 a retired trooper by the name of uh, Louis Trowbridge. Uh, He's done some very high-profile cases, and uh, he did a wonderful job. And let me tell you, when we were sitting at the table, you saw the scene. Uh, As he he, uh, brought this picture to life... uh, it just gave me chills, and uh, he did a great job. And then once that was done, uh, I had a young lady by the name of Tara Sasserak, who's uh, a great artist, uh, put the finishing touches on it, colorized it, uh, shaded it in because he had very dark eyes. And uh, what you saw at the end, uh, that picture, is exactly what I saw as a child. Well, now, is, was there any way that you could have taken that drawing and maybe matched it up to some kind of uh, pictures of people that uh, the police had on file? Well, actually, during the, uh, during the uh, uh, well, I don't think anybody looked that bad, even though there were some rough customers, because the way they do these uh, things... He, I, I sort of give him a description. He picks out pictures of uh, uh, of uh, guys that have been arrested before uh, that have the same uh, similar features. And I look at them, uh, and I'll find somebody with high cheekbones, with uh, thin lips, uh, eyes uh, narrow, you know, different hairlines. And then I'll give it to him, and that's how he does his drawing. But, uh, no, I don't think, uh, you know, what I was, what I was seeing wasn't uh, a person that was living. This person wasn't from around here. So I don't know if he was on file. And uh, even though some of them guys were pretty awful looking, I don't think any of them was, was as frightening as the, as the staring man or the entity that I, uh, that I seen that night. 
So well, I can just imagine that um, having this happen to you as a child um, does put that seed of thought in there that um, you do want to help other children, well, children now, uh, through that process, because uh, you have a very unique um, perspective now of having to go through that as a child. Um, yes. It, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, but yeah, no, go ahead. Finish. No, um, I was, you know, people uh, have, have asked me, you know, did you do it to... I, I, I just did it because it was an interesting story and, and, and maybe, it would, maybe it would help somebody. I, but while, while I was promoting the film and everything, you wouldn't believe all the emails and messages that I have gotten while, you know, before even the, the people have seen this and then even after they've seen the movie because they've had similar, similar encounters. So this might be, uh, I'm waiting to hear if people have, when they see the movie, those that have similar encounters, if it's the same entity, that, that would be interesting. I've had many people, you know, I've had doctors, lawyers, clergy that have had similar experiences. I had somebody call me up two weeks ago and started asking me questions. And he said, did your entity have a red face? And it took me back and I said, yeah. So what I'm finding is, is that uh, I actually wasn't alone that this might be a phenomenon that goes a lot deeper than just me. Uh, obviously, people have had similar similar encounters and have seen similar things. Maybe not exactly what I saw, but I've had similar encounters. But the fact is that, you know, if I find that other people have seen the same entity that I did, that, 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 uh, that's interesting. And it, and it, it uh, deserves to be looked into a, a little more deeply. I think so, too. And not to make light of it, but for a lot of people to know that it, it is kind of a boogeyman in a way. Um, that maybe it does thrive on childhood fear. That, that very well could be. You know, that, like we said, you know, even though I know it was probably a, a, an evil type thing, uh, that uh, you know, uh, it, it was thriving on, on my. It might have been thriving on my fear, and maybe it just, you know, maybe it was just with children. I don't know. I really don't know why it was there, or what was causing it. Um, your parents never saw the entity, correct? They never mentioned it to me. My mom, you know, you know uh, was still alive. Uh, uh, or, you know, when I had this interest, and she never mentioned it before. And I still, you know, never told my mom. I never told my dad. I did make amends with my father. I just want you to know that before he passed away. Uh, you know, we didn't get along, and... Uh, I actually took him into my house, and uh, he ultimately had to go back to the hospital where he died. But uh, I, I never told either one of them. I never got to say anything to me. Now, I want to remind everybody that if you do have questions for Bruce, you can private chat them to either Ceiling Cat, Cat Paraview, Jeffrey Gould, or myself, and we will get those questions right over to Bruce. Um. I actually have uh, kind of a goofy, stupid technical question. Um, how is the, the film is released? It's on DVD, available for sale. Correct. That's correct. Uh, is there a reason it hasn't been uh, entered into the Internet Movie Database, the IMDb, where people would find out about it uh, through your entry, because you have an entry, uh, being yourself, uh, so that people would know that the film exists. Apart from self-promotion, well, that's funny that you, you you mentioned it, but we're in the process of doing that now. Excellent. Great, great, sounds really good. Now, yeah, but Brett and I, it's funny you mentioned because Brett, when I, Brett and I were talking about this a couple of days ago, and you know, I'm not into this type of stuff. You know, uh, you know, Brett knows more about that, those things, and so I asked him what the pros and cons, and you know. There really, there really is no kinds to it. I said, well, 
hey, do it if you want to. If it, if it, if it helps anybody, if, you know, uh, uh, you know, if this film helps people. Uh, I, what I said to mention before was that these people that have contacted me thanked me for coming out with this story. All right, because, in other words, they've had similar experiences. They've been made fun of. And uh, now they say, we'll see these things do happen. You know, even though there might be people that don't believe me, I really don't care. <laughs> That's the least of my problems. But, uh, you know, if it helps somebody, I'm glad I get it, you know? Now, were you ever able to do any... Uh, research on the uh, house or the, the apartment building uh, to see if anything had ever happened there? Uh, a little bit, Henry, what I found, you know, like I said, I was born in 54. The projects were built in 40, and I could not find anything uh, as far as the people living in that place that would indicate uh, or, or would uh, give a reason for what I saw. Hmm. Wow. I know it's my Bible. I, I don't want, you know, everybody can guess uh, their theories, but the bottom line is you don't really know. Well, now. Yeah, true, unless um, if, if you ever get the chance to go back and and find someone who is still being actively haunted by a, a character who looks like that. Uh, you may never know exactly what it was. Right. I know. Uh, we did wind up going. Uh, you know, I, I think, Henry, if you saw the movie, uh, I don't want to give it away, but one of the coolest things, and I had been trying for over a year and a half to get into that apartment to no avail. And then sort of toward the end of, the end of filming, uh, I will... Uh, I negotiated a little bit. I was allowed back into the apartment, only in my bedroom, for an hour. And I know you saw the part where we did the EVP. Right. My oldest, my oldest son, John, and I. <clears throat> and uh, something cool really happens. Now I don't know if that was uh, the staring man or not. I'm not saying it was, but uh, we actually had a couple EVPs and. Uh, the, the, the other one that you could hear here, headphones could not be put on to film. It just wasn't, wasn't loud enough uh, for people to hear, so we left it out. But right. uh, there was there was more to it. So it was uh, for me to go back into that bedroom after 53 years was just mind boggling. I mean, I had the heebie jeebies. My son, my oldest son, who is also a police officer. Uh, he's not into the town almost as much as uh, uh, his brother and I. He sort of, <laughs> you saw what happened. He, he, he was there for moral support. But, the, you know, the paranormal is not his cup of tea. Yeah, I, I think that uh, after what uh, he did there, that he didn't want any more to do with it, apparently. <laughs> no, he would have asked me that. Uh, 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 I mean, my son is... Uh, is uh, I show his uh, uh, valor uh, uh, in many instances, but uh, he met in, as, as you heard what he said during the film. Uh, he, he met into the paranormal. He's, uh, he's he wanted, he even right before we we did that scene, he asked me. He said, "Dad, do you really need me to do this?" I said, "No, John, but I'd like you to be with me, you know, just for some support." So I got to give him credit. He stuck it out. <laughs> and, uh, and when I told him and when he heard uh, what was on that uh, 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 recording, that uh, it gave him the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> wow. Pretty interesting, though. Uh, it's a great uh, little DVD to watch. Um, it will scare you. Uh, like I said, uh, you probably don't want to watch it at night with the lights off by yourself because uh, it is hair raising. So, but uh, so now I have a, a film question. Then go ahead. Um, you didn't film 
in the um, the apartment itself for the majority of the film. Uh, was it a built set, or did you use another house? Uh, so so it, we, we, yeah. we only did the, the only scene that we did in the original location was the EVP scene. And that was where, where my son, where my son and I did the EVP because we were only allowed to be in there for one hour, and uh, I had to do some wheeling and dealing. But I was so excited that they let you know. Yeah. They didn't let me. I had to do, uh, you know, I had to. You know, so did uh, did you film the rest of the movie in a, another house or? Yes, different. We had different locations that okay. I we we painstakingly tried to make it as as just uh, exactly the way it was where 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 I lived. I mean, the bedroom scenes was just uh, the settings were just like uh, my bedroom. Uh, 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 it was very difficult at times to find uh, locations, but uh, uh, I actually used my my old wrestling coach, uh, Mr. Joe Placker. Uh, his the outside of his uh, apartment building, which was similar to to the 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 real one. So we painstakingly tried to make it as as uh, as real as we could. I mean, we had a makeup artist, uh, we had a hairstylist, because we're going back to the 50s, mind you. So mm-hmm. we had to dress, dress and everything. So we did the best we could, you know. And uh, I think, you know, you know I, think, I think we did a pretty good job, if I don't say so myself. I mean, uh, everybody, everybody did well in putting this together. Well, I'm curious because one of the techniques that some ghost hunters use is recreating certain events to try to act as a trigger uh, for more paranormal events. And I'm wondering, even though it was a different apartment building, whether or not during filming um, in the uh, the place where you weren't at, whether or not you picked up paranormal activity. Well, we didn't have any. Well, we had the the mice going, but uh, we actually uh, uh, filmed at uh, 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 one of my family's uh, uh, basements, and we built the set. Uh, so, uh, but uh, the only thing that happened while making is that uh, uh, now, now this is pretty funny, sort of. Uh, I'll tell you this while I'm thinking about it. Is that uh, now Mike Kosky, who is one of the premier uh, uh, zombies? He's been about thirty different zombies in the Walking Dead series. Very, very great, very nice guy. Great friend. Uh, he was in makeup. He played the, uh, the standing man. Now here's Mike. You know, he had in, uh, and Mike's all day in makeup. You know, and here's the, the standing man following me around all day. But when it came to the scene where uh, uh, the young man, uh, Ray Palmieri, who played me as a young child, who did just a fantastic job, uh, in in my opinion, and in most opinion, uh, when we did the the scene where he tells uh, my, where I tell my my grandfather what I saw, well, uh, during that scene, to be very honest, I became very emotional. And I and I broke down, and uh, I, I had to leave, and I went upstairs, and I had to compose myself, and then I came back down, and it was funny. The first person that comes up to me is Mike Kosky, who's in makeup as a staring man, trying to console me and asking me if I was okay. And I actually got a big chuckle out of it because it was ironic. You know, and he knew I was upset. He, he seen me, and he comes over to me and, you know, puts his arm around me and says, Bruce, you okay? I know you were upset about that. And he, he, here's, the, here's the staring man, you know, being, being, nice, being nice to me. It was, it was actually pretty funny. Uh, Mike uh, is a great guy, and, uh, you know, uh, he did a fantastic job. But I thought that was uh, a, a great, great uh, story, and it actually... Put a smile to my face. It says, "Mike, 
Can you believe this? After all I went through, here you are in this scary makeup. You know, uh, the thing I was most frightened of when I was a child, and you're, you're trying to make me feel better, and uh, that, that was pretty cool. Well, that all could right. be pretty cathartic, actually, of um, what scares you most comes back to comfort. What's that? I'm sorry. It's very cathartic in a way because you get to meet your um, meet the boogeyman, so to speak, and he turns out to be a nice guy. Um, yeah, 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 thank goodness, yeah. Mike, uh, we had to be very careful with Lanny because, you know, he was a young child. This was actually his first uh, uh, acting job, but he did such a fantastic job. Like I said, I did the, the casting for this film, and uh, we met, I met him, uh, and his mom and dad in, in uh, at a uh, diner uh, just to interview him. And it only took me a few few minutes to realize that this was the young boy that I wanted to play me because we sat down at the table and he actually, he was a little guy, and he actually says to me, he goes, well, Mr. Tango, I hear you're making a film. And I thought it was so cool the way he came out with that. And then... Uh, you know, after talking, I, I told them just before they left that uh, he was my guy. So it, it worked out well. He's a fine young man. Uh, he's from New Jersey, uh, and his mom and dad are great people. And uh, it was uh, it was good that he, he's, a, he's a natural. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, he'll go on to do other things. Well, I think uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and take our last break. And uh, we got lots more questions. And uh, again, to remind you, if you do have questions for Bruce, uh, you can private chat them to Ceiling Cat, Cat Paraview, Jeffrey Gould, or myself. And yep. if you're listening from somewhere else other than here in the chat room, you can send us a question to theparanormalview at gmail.com. Dot com and mm -hmm. make sure you quote it as question. Yep. And uh, we will get that right over. And also, how else can they send a question, Kat? You can tweet it to us. Our account name on Twitter is at Paraview Radio. And also, Jenny B. in our chat room, your question already has been filed, and I'll be asking it after the break. All right. Very cool. Okay. Um, what we're going to do is Jeffrey's going to take us out and yep. CC will bring us back in. So be right back. Okay, so you're, li you're listening to the paranormal view on para-x.com with hosts, Henry Foister, Cat Cloco, ceiling cat, Barbara Duncan, and myself, Jeffrey Gould with tonight's guest, Bruce Tango and his auto bio story, the staring man. So stay tuned for more of the paranormal view after this uh, break. Welcome back, everyone, to the Paranormal View here on Para-X Radio. I want to thank everyone who joined us in the chat room. And there's it's standing room only in there right now for our very special guest, Bruce Tango. As a matter of fact, they're listening all over the world. And tonight, they're listening in from the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, Indonesia, and Greece. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome back, Bruce. Nice to be back. Nice to um, be anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Don, we don't we don't have a known returning? No. No, no. Not tonight. Oh, I don't, he, he could drop by later. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Oh, welcome Greece and Indonesia. Yes. Uh, haven't heard of those too much, but uh we're very glad that you decided to uh listen in tonight. Hope you're enjoying mm -hmm. the show. Uh, do, do we have a question from uh, the chat room? One of you guys. We uh, do. We yes. have one from Jenny B. Let me grab my uh, little clipboard here. And uh, Jenny B. from our chat room asks uh, Bruce Tango: Did they investigate the history of the property? Did it turn up any useful information? Uh oh, we talked about that before. Uh, yeah, I did before. look. I, I, yeah, I, I looked into it. And uh, I could not find anything that would uh, uh, that would uh, give reason for what I saw. Nothing right. whatsoever. 
Right. Which is why you've put out the call to see if anybody else has seen or encountered this type of entity before. Yes, you know, I'll be totally honest with you. Uh, uh, I I did not tell the people mm-hmm. uh, that lived in the apartment that that I lived in. I did not ask. To, I wanted to mm-hmm. ask them, but mm-hmm. I thought that if I did start talking about it, I I sort of just told them that I was doing a documentary mm-hmm. uh, about where I was born. And uh-huh. I wasn't lying. That's where I was born. But I didn't want to tell them uh, because I was afraid that uh, they they wouldn't let me into the apartment or, you know, think I'm a nut or whatever. But, uh, mm-hmm. and, and to be honest with you, it's, it's uh, the place is totally, totally different uh, from, from the 50s and 60s. Uh, okay. It, it's crime-ridden living, and uh, policemen are not very well liked in that area. And uh, I didn't even tell them that I was a retired cop. Uh, but some of the filming that we did on the outside, I actually brought some of my brothers along with me because uh, you're a prime target, even though uh, I can still carry a weapon. Uh, I don't like to. Right. But uh, I just try to avoid problems, you know, from nipping in the bud, so, you know, uh, while we were filming some of the exterior shots in the, in the hallways, mm-hmm. I had some of my brother officers with me. Okay. Now, after you uh, was uh, started working on the uh, police force, um, did you um, ever come across any paranormal activity in any of the cases that you uh, uh, did? Yes, I'll tell you one story, Henry. Actually, there was a couple of, of incidents, but one in particular is that uh, uh, very cool story. I wish I knew as much uh, then as I did now. I was in my 20s. Uh, this had to be uh, in the early 80s. Uh, and uh, Long story short, we were called to an apartment building where a woman, a middle-aged woman, was babysitting a young boy. And uh, when we got there and knocked on the door, the woman says, please come in. She was obviously very uh, uh, nervous and upset. She started rambling on. She says, I'm trying to get, find uh, the the." The mother of this child, I wanted to come here. The things are going crazy. I, I, I'm so, so we're trying to calm her down to get the story straight. And then all of a sudden, uh, there was a door to my to our light. And I, I heard a real big bang in there. And she said, see? So I opened the door. It was very dark. And I asked her where the light switch was. And it was to my left, and I felt with my hand and put the switch on. Now, when the light came on, what I saw was a very small bedroom with a twin bed with a little boy, maybe about seven years old, uh, laying in the bed on his back with the covers up. And uh, at the foot of his bed was a big armchair. It was upside down. And I asked him, I said, what happened? What was that noise? He says the chair flew across the room and landed over there. And I, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my partner. My partner's looking at me, even though I'm into the paranormal and stuff. You know, this is, you know, nothing really like this has ever happened uh, as far as this type of thing. So uh, uh, there was a small closet. Went into the closet. There was nobody there. Nobody under the bed. The windows locked. No place for anybody to hide. He was the only, uh, only thing, only uh, living thing in, in that uh, in that bedroom. So I talked to him for a little while, and, and uh, he, he seemed okay. And uh, after we checked the, the whole room out and didn't find anything, I asked him, uh, "I said, do you want me to leave the light on?" He says, "You can if you will, if you want." And uh, 
And I said, you want me to leave the door open a little bit? He said, yeah, that would be okay if you want. So we, we, I did so. I left the light on in his room and uh, uh, left the door open. And then we went back into the living room area, and the woman started again. She said, see what I mean? This has been happening all night. I, I, I can't take this. Uh, you know, I just, this, I, I, I want to find this little boy's mom. And while she's talking and ranting again, I heard the, by the way, when I went there, I, I grabbed the chair and I put the chair back at the head of the bed, uh, you know, uh, right side up. And, you know, then we left. So while she's ranting again, I heard the big boom again. But, but, boom. I was right by the door. I opened the door. He was still in bed on his back. And what do I find? The chair that I had just uprighted at the head of the bed, back at the foot of the bed, upside down again. And it wasn't one of those little chairs. It was a pretty, pretty nice size chair. So, you know, I'm looking at it. Well, this is, this is, uh, this, you know, this is really cool. My partner was getting, you know, uh, freaked out. He says, I don't understand this at all. And uh, let's put it this way. There was no way that little boy could have done that uh, and got in the bed because I was right by the door that light was on. So, uh, you, I mean, I, I have a good, good idea of what was going on. Uh, do, do, do you guys have any idea? Did we? Um... Yeah. Well, how young was the kid? It was about seven. Okay. The, what first came to mind for me was poltergeist activity caused by an agent um, that's usually a kid. Right. And usually kids under stress can have that kind of phenomena happen, as it is believed absolutely. by parapsychologists. So yeah, he seems a little bit uh, younger than the normal age set, which tends to be teens, but that doesn't mean it necessarily couldn't happen. Right. You know, in our retrospect, uh, but, but uh, I found the little boy very calm. Now, as you know, you're right about the poltergeist. A lot of people don't realize that that's that is another form of poltergeist. Be it that person uh, knows they have that power, or it just gives off the energy that they don't even know they have that power. Either one. But uh, I was just thinking, uh, I would love to run across this young man again. Uh, I was thinking he'd probably have to be in his 40s now. I would love to meet up with him and just sit down and talk with him and ask him if he if he knows, if he if he has any gifts or uh, if anything you know, like that has ever happened again. But uh, like I said, I didn't know, uh, uh, you know then as much as I do now. But that's probably what it was. Wow. Back yeah, then, I think uh, back kids then, give off that energy. Kids yeah. give off yeah, the energy, then, and the poltergeist plays with it. Yeah. Yes. And back then, we were told uh, not to write a report and never to talk about it. You know, wow. if this happened nowadays, uh, they would have all kind of uh, uh, news news people there, and, you know, it would be a big thing, cameras, and they'd probably be doing some type of episode there. But uh, we were told to keep our mouth shut and never, never to talk about it. Wow. Yeah, there's a few times I've heard about poltergeist activity happening. And one in my own life, um, very spookily, all my music boxes went off once in my room at the same time. Really? Yeah, that's, How that's creepy is that? Yeah, hmm. yeah it, it's... And the house I live in, or house I grew up in, is very haunted. And uh, it was just very spooky. <laughs> Uh, and they were different types of music boxes, too. Um, some of them were like your traditional ballerina ones where you had to kind of wind it and then open it. But it started playing the music without being opened. Another one was a just a box. It kind of looked like a table, like a really low sitting table. Um, but it was very small. It was only four inches by four inches and it was hand carved. And you had to wind it up on the bottom and then put it down and it would play. And that started playing. And uh, then we had a wind-up teddy bear, stuff like that. And they all started playing at one time. It happened once. 
that was the only time it happened. And I believe I was in late middle school. So in my mid teens. Are there any vouchers going off at the same um, time? I mean, I'm going to say it was five and they were in different parts of the okay. room. They weren't together. And, uh, well, I pretty, live in, it was very creepy. That's pretty cool. That's, that's, and, uh, normal. that's beyond any type of coincidence, you know? Yeah. Now, let me just say, had you touched them or you probably hadn't even touched them in a while. Am I correct? No, they were on shelving on different bookcases around my room. And at the time I was doing my homework on my bed. So I was in the center of my room, and all of these were on the outlying areas around bookcases. I think one was on my dresser. So, yeah, it, it was... We've had lots of spooky things, including a hat man sighting in this house. So, um, yeah. And I'm broadcasting from this very house right Some now. very house, yes. <laughs> yes, this very house. So I'm sure something's going to pop in after the show. I even broadcast out of the house once. No, I'm up in northern Indiana, Henry. Oh, a different house. Well, I'm in the house I grew up in. Oh, well, your house uh, in Cincinnati's oh. uh, kind of haunted, too. No, we well, we have a ghost cat, yeah. and we haven't seen it for quite a while. Oh. But um, in that that's house, you a, would that's think it's a haunted. ghost. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, thank you, Jeff. Yep, Jeff is good. <laughs> um, <sighs> thanks, Jeff. But uh, uh, my house in Cincinnati is 106 years old. And a lot of people think, oh, yeah, old house equals it has to be haunted. But the house that I grew up in is only as old as me. And I don't think I'm that old. And, <laughs> and uh, it used to be a cow, just a cow pasture before then so we don't know what haunts our house well we have suspicions but but it was a very clear hey i want your attention motive by any of the spirits in the house to put, turn on five music boxes at the same time and afterwards i just rounded up all the music boxes put them in a box and shoved them in the attic <laughs> it was like <laughs> i'm done with these uh Let's see. Um, what, uh, in all your investigations, what place was the most interesting place uh, that you've investigated? Would you repeat that, Henry, please? I said, what place was the most interesting place that you've investigated other than the place you grew up in? Yeah, you're starting to break up. Every everybody is actually. I don't know what it is, but uh, I got that question. As long as you can hear me, uh, I don't know if the people can hear me, but uh, I've been to can many. You, can many you see different... in the chat room? Uh, can you I'm see in the, the chat text room, in yes. the chat room? Yeah. Okay. Yes. What is your? What was the question, Henry? What is his? Oh, what? He, he's already got the question. Hey, oh, yeah, I thought he couldn't I hear it. Question. Yeah. No, I was broken up, but I got it enough. So, uh, thank you. Uh, I, I find any place that I go is interesting, but uh, uh, I, I just, uh, uh, within the past year, I submitted uh, a location to the production company to do to do a case in New Jersey. Now, you're going to have to forgive me because I can't tell you where it's at. Uh, but... Uh, I went there at uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I met a gentleman. Uh, dates back to the 1700s. And uh, we sat in this one room, which was the living room of power. And uh, we talked for about an hour, hour and a half about the history and the things that happened. When we, uh, this is probably tied, with, uh, tied for first with uh, uh, the the Scary Man story, as far as uh, one of my all-time great paranormal experiences. And what happened was, after we had talked for about an hour and a half, we got up, went across, left the room, went across the hallway, and went into another room, which was the music room. Now, I turned around, 
and I was facing the room that we were just in, and he, the gentleman who was behind me was facing me. And when I turned around, this is 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I saw a little girl that must have been about 9 years old in a, like a pale blue uh, cotton baggie, if you will, with like uh, brown hair to her shoulders, just right across the doorway from my right to the left. And it was a stupid question on my part because the gentleman was facing me and not facing the, the room where I saw this young little girl. And uh, I said, did you see that? But I was so excited because and the first thing that popped in my head, I said, this guy kept uh, his granddaughter here, granddaughter home from school today to try to pull the wool over my eyes because she was in her bare feet. She looked at me straight in my eyes and just smiled at me as she ran across the doorway in the room that I was sitting in before. But I was there within a matter of seconds. I looked to my left. All that was there was the corner of the room. It was nothing. I had, it was the coolest, one of the coolest things. I've had many experiences, but that's tied for first. Let me tell you, that was very, very cool. I had uh, I'd gone back there again and did an EVP session, and I don't know, did we get, uh, what was funny is my recorder, my batteries died, but we all heard uh, a disembodied voice of a little girl. Very cool. I'm hoping that uh, that we do an episode there, but I'm going to make those decisions. Wow. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> you know, that that's, I've never actually got to see anything, but I think uh, seeing something like that would be absolutely great. Yeah, it was just like if you saw me, it was like a living, you know, a living being. It was a full body, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, spirit and ghost. Uh, she looked at me, smiled, looked me straight in the eyes, ran from her left to her right in her bare feet. Uh, sort of pushed the guy aside and I looked to my left and she was gone. And he looked at me because he knew I saw something. And uh, I, to this day, I didn't tell him what I saw. Uh, there's reasons for that, but uh, he looked at me and said, Bruce, it happens all the time. That's all he said to me. He knew I saw something. So, like I said, I thought he was, he was playing, uh, trying to, uh, play a trick on me, you know, but it, it wasn't. Uh, I had seen a ghost. Wow. That that would really be be neat to do that. Uh, you know, then to go back there and get a, a, a disembodied voice of a little girl. And I was with a group of people, and uh, they, they, there was, most of them heard it, and it was a little girl. Now, I, now you mentioned you... I was going to say, you're, you, I, I can understand you're not being able to say precisely where it is. Uh, does that mean it's a private residence or it's something public they don't want promoted? I, it, it's not a private residence. Okay, yeah, that's what I figured. That much I could tell you. It wasn't a private residence, so though. It, uh, it's, a, it's an historical place. Yeah, a lot of Northern I, that I, never I grew knew up about. In- Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, New Jersey has very got a lot of New Jersey has a lot of very cool haunted places. I grew up there, and uh, I I grew up in Morris County, and I lived in Essex County, and um, I I lived in a haunted house for like ten years. Um, I didn't experience anything myself, but my brother saw an entity, uh, and I had a friend in from another state that didn't know that the house had anything, and she could hear somebody walking on the second floor when it was just she and I in the house. Um, but yeah, we um, have you ever been up to Ringwood Manor up in Oakland? Uh, near, I, I think it's in Oakland, or 
Yeah, I believe you're right. I know about it, but to be honest, I haven't been there. I can live the 10 lifetimes and not hit all the haunted spots in Jersey. <laughs> in, Jersey yeah, really. in, in Jersey itself, you know, you don't have to go far. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it just, it's just, you know, uh, really, really cool when you experience something like that. I, I, I'm like a kid, you know, and to think uh, at this point in my life I'm doing what I'm doing because I've had such an interest in it my entire life. And uh, it's very cool, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I still, my, my son gets a kick out of me when I get excited, you know. Uh, I mean, I, I've been in, in, in situations as a police officer, and I was a lot calmer, you know. Uh, uh, in things you, you wouldn't think I would be calm, but I was. But I get excited when it comes to the paranormal. Uh, it's a very intriguing and interesting field. Now, um, when you uh, actually went to uh, investigate with the uh, ghost hunters, I um, imagine that was probably pretty awesome to be able to do that uh, and do it uh, with your son, Dave. Oh, yeah, that was, that was really cool. Uh, you know, my, my, you know, my son got on the show and, uh, uh, you know, the, the way he got, I, I can tell you that story. That's an interesting story. Sure. Uh, uh, he, uh, he had his own group, a little group, uh, he and a friend, and they used to go out and check places out, you know. I would have liked to have been asked, but he never asked me to go along because I think there was some females involved. But uh, he, uh, he, he actually called the, the show up Ghost Hunters, it was the beginning of its uh, second season, and lo and behold, uh, the, you know, David uh, had gone to a private residence in Roosevelt Park, New Jersey, and it was above and beyond uh, of uh, things that were happening above above them. So they wind up, lo and behold, they wind up coming there, doing an episode, and they asked uh, my son and uh, his friend, to be on that episode, which is really, really cool. And uh, after he did the episode, and it was a great episode. And uh, two weeks later, uh, now, as you know, my son Dave has uh, Tourette syndrome. And uh, we didn't know what exactly he was going to do for a vocation in life and, and such, but uh, uh, he's in a movie theater. And his, his phone starts vibrating and goes into the hall. This is a couple of weeks after uh, uh, the episode. And uh, it was uh, Pilgrim Films from uh, California. He said, Dave, and they asked, is it Dave, uh, we like the way you look. We like the way you handled yourself. Would you be interested in joining the show? And that's how it started. And uh, that was really, really cool. And uh, actually, when you know, I'm not ashamed to say, you know, something finally good happened to my uh, son Dave, and he when he called me, uh, I actually broke down in tears. I was so happy for him. But uh, uh, then after after he got on the show, uh, I had met obviously I met the whole crew and the cast and became friends with them all, and they knew my background and. Uh, I wind up getting a call myself uh, from Pilgrim Films, uh, uh, yeah. and uh, they says, "Mr. Taylor, we'd like to like for you to be on the show." And I says, "Oh, really?" He says, "Yeah, we'd like you. We we know your background. We think you'd be interesting." And I mm. says, "Well, well, thank you, but no, thank you." <laughs> and he says, "What?" I, I I says, "Thank you." I said, "But this is my son's thing, uh, you know, you know," and uh, I. I I'm happy that he's on, and I'm happy for him and everything. And he says, are you sure? I said, I'm absolutely sure. So uh, he was surprised that I turned him down, but I did. So about a half hour later, my son Dave calls, and he says, Dad, did they call you? And I says, yes. And, uh, and, they, and he says, well, you say no. I says, because it's your thing, Dave. I don't want to, you know. He said, Dad, I want you to do it. And I says, are you sure? And he says, yeah, absolutely. 
I was so happy you said that because I was so excited. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, to get to get to go uh, the places uh, that most people are, are you know, are, are really can't get to. But I've actually, uh, what I've done over the years is help them find locations. Uh, you know, they've been to places that most people can't get into. Uh, they've been to places that uh, they've had to get clearance from from the Pentagon. So, uh, but uh, uh, every location that I've given them over the years, uh, except recently, they, they've done every one of them, and uh, uh, because we've been very lucky. So, but uh, that's how I got on the show, and I'm like a kid uh, in the candy store when I'm with them. You know, they affectionately call me uh, Papa Tango. And uh, like I says, you know, whenever I do an episode, something cool happens all the time. I just uh, am lucky that way. Yeah, that's that's about the way it is with me. I can get a lot of EVPs, but uh, uh, I, I'm not one that uh, sees anything or feels anything, but uh, Cat does. Cat can tell you. Yeah, where I see at. a lot of stuff. <laughs> like when we were all at um, Hillview Manor, like myself and a good group of people saw the night nurse making her rounds on one of the floors. But Henry caught all the EVPs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, some good ones too, but uh, that's the way it usually is. And uh, yeah. Like like you were saying about the uh, the little girl, uh, we did a, a house, I don't know, it was last year sometime, uh, last fall, and uh, there was a little girl that was in that house that uh, was, uh, we, we picked up quite a few uh, EVPs from her, uh, which I thought was real interesting. And yeah. We'll be talking about those in a few weeks uh we'll have on uh lynn bell who was the medium that was there with us and we'll be talking about that also yes so she uh, was sharp yep she was um let's see here um so are are you uh gonna be on any more of the uh ghost hunters have they called you to do any more episodes I'm I'm supposed to be, you know, I'm on call every once in a while. They they call me and they dust me off, <laughs> and uh, they dust me off and they bring me out, you know. And uh, I'm looking forward to my next call because uh, I love being with the guys and uh, they're like an extended family. You know, I lo- you know, obviously I love I love them all, especially my son and Steve. Steve is like another son to me, and uh, I have a ball when I'm with them. Uh, and it's always exciting and, uh, you know, and always a great time and a great experience. And like I said, at, the, at this point in time, to be able to do do that and uh, have an interest in the paranormal and just to do it with, with my son is, is something special. And, uh, I, I, you know, uh, my son amazes me, you know, as I have said on the show, I said, you know, growing up, I showed him everything or taught him everything that I knew or explained things to him as much as as much as I could. Now it's no longer the father that teaches the son. Now the son quite often teaches the father, which I think is I'm very proud of and, and it's very cool because every once in a while I get stumped. Uh, I mean, uh, I, uh, I have a... I uh, have a very analytic mind. I can figure things out. Uh, very good at debunking. And uh, like I said, I'm like a ghost magnet. But, you know, uh, who better to go to than my son, Steve, and these guys? Because I don't think there's anybody in the world that has done as many investigations. And, you know, uh, when you do that, maybe you, you do you do learn things, believe me. Now, uh, you also uh, work with uh, Ideal Events. You get to go to some of the uh, events uh, that they put on? Yes, uh, you know, there, there's events, and, uh, you know, Mark, uh, uh, you know, calls me every once in a while to, you know, to be be with the gang. And uh, I, if not, I keep myself pretty busy. Uh, different place, uh, you know, I'm, 
uh, bookings already uh, into October and uh, things coming up uh, in April and in New Jersey. Uh, so I keep myself busy and I enjoy I enjoy meeting the people, you know, and uh, uh, I have a great time and, you know, uh, all in all, uh, most of the people are very friendly and uh, uh, I, I enjoy talking to them. So, uh, let's see. I know uh, we're going to be, end of this month, we're going to be in Gettysburg. End of this month, you got something else uh, that you're going to be doing. Well, uh, what I have this month, and is on a- April 18th, uh, they're having something called the, the Power, Power Unity Expo in Woodbridge, New Jersey. If anybody's interested or in the Jersey area, it's called the Power Unity Expo. It's in Woodbridge, New Jersey. I'm sure if you Google it, you know, you can find out all the info. Uh, and then uh, on April 20, the, the week after, I'll be going to one of my favorite spots, uh, the, the Murchison Drovers Tavern Museum. That's in Rowley, New Jersey, uh, where I'll be doing a, a meet and greet and uh, a short investigation. I'll be showing evidence. And, uh, you know, probably doing an EVP session. That's April 24th on a Friday and uh, or on the 25th. You can pick either day. So uh, I got some cool stuff planned for that. I'm looking forward to that. I think this will be my fourth or fifth year there. Uh, it, it, it's a great place, and it, it's very, very active. All right. Uh, I'm sure you guys got about a ton of more questions, don't you, for uh, Bruce? I've done Hawk the uh, whole show. Well, make sure you – I certainly hope that the recording does come through because those were a, a number of events. I was like, whoa. <laughs> uh, I was able to put the Para Unity Expo link into the chat room, and that will certainly be on the report page. Uh, so I know where Rahway is. Um doesn't Rahway it's have called a Mer- It's called the Merchants and Drovers Tavern Museum. It's in Rahway, New Jersey. It's on the 24th and 25th of April. Uh, yeah. Okay. Trouble is your audio is cutting in and out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm curious with all the investigations that you've had, Bruce, whether or not anything's ever followed you home. I, 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 you got cut out. Uh, are, you, are you asked me if, if something came home with me? Right. Yes, you want to know if anything's yeah. ever followed you home. I'm asked that question a lot. As far as I know, no. But if if, if the spirit does come home with me, I hope it's a female spirit. You know, <laughs> maybe, I, maybe 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 I could get lucky. I don't know. I would see that. Uh, you know, there's a ghost dating site out there now. Maybe. <laughs> Well, I, I, I actually hope I don't have to resort to that yet. But, uh, you know, but, but a funny, quick, a quick funny story is that uh, during the summer, by the way, in the summer, we, uh, back in season five, we did an episode uh, called, uh, what was it called? A Touch by Evil. Uh, we did uh, a place in Cape May called the Southern Mansion. And I'll be down there for my fifth or sixth year. Uh, in July and August on Thursdays, uh, doing a meet and greet and investigation on, on Thursday nights. But uh, one of the main spirits, supposedly, her name is Esther, and she actually came through one day. And what we, the last thing they do, we do a, a half hour lights out, lights out uh, EVP session, and then I play it back for everybody. And in the six years, I've, I've only been zilched. One time. But uh, one question that I asked jokingly uh, is I asked Esther uh, during the EVP session, uh, you know, if she would if she would go out on a date with me. And everybody chuckled and everything. But lo and behold, when we put it back, and I, I could prove this, she actually said yes. <laughs> <laughs> now that would be interesting. <laughs> That'd be a great yeah, yeah. Well, everybody, everybody's astonished. 
So I, I told everybody that night, I said, we all got a kick out of it. I mean, it was really cool. You could hear her say yes. And uh, I said, well, you know, I'm already set up for when I pass on. You know, I got a date with Esther already lined up. Uh, cut out again. I heard the very last bit of it. But I guess well, it's good that you have uh, somebody waiting for you on the other side. Uh, well, I, I, already have, I, I have a date all lined up for when I, when I pass on. When you pass yeah. over. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bruce, I want to take time to thank you for being with us tonight. And uh, I'm going to give you a chance to tell everybody uh, how they can stay in contact with you, uh, how to get your DVD, all the good stuff. And then we want you to stay on until after we're off the air, and we'll talk with you for a minute or two. Uh, sounds good. Uh, you can get me on Facebook. Uh, you know, that, that's where you can you find me on Facebook. And uh, uh I also have an email, which is TrueGrit911 at AOL.com. That's like the John Wayne movie. True. And my oldest son, John, was born on 9-11. So it's TrueGrit911 at AOL.com or on Facebook. And you can and get the on... DVD. Go ahead. You can get the, I'm sorry. You can get the DVD at www.brucetango.com. Store Envy, S T O R E one E N V Y dot com. Bruce Tangles dot Store Envy dot com. All right. Uh, Jeff? Yes, you can go to my website, which is uh, jeffgould.net, dot net, G E O F F G O U L D dot net. And if you add slash 2011pnv.htm, that's my Paranormal View hub page where you can access previous shows, reports, guests, websites, and book links and such, as well as previous show archived podcasts. And uh, like the, so tonight's report will have the links to those uh, reports when I play it back and get the information. Uh, the show's official site is theparanormalview.com. On Twitter, you're welcome to follow me at Real Badger, R E A L B A D G E R. At Facebook, you could just do a search for The Paranormal View. There we are. Please like our page and make sure your settings are to get our show updates and oddness and comical weirdness articles that get posted. So, thank yeah. you, thank you, and happy Easter. Cat. Okay, finally, you can follow the Paranormal View on Twitter at Paraview Radio. You can also follow me on Twitter at Cat Cloco. That's K A T K L O C K O W. Or you can follow my gra- graphic novel at Jinxed Comic on Twitter. You can go to jinxedcomic.com and see new pages every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Very and you can also good. buy my comic book there. All right. Very good. Next week. We have uh, Artie Six Killer Clark, and she's the author of Encounters with Star People, which uh, it's about Native Americans and uh, the contacts that they have had with the uh, aliens. So ought to be very interesting. Uh, so you'll have to come and listen to that next week. Uh, we have... And I want to thank uh, Bruce again for uh, being with us. Uh, very, very good uh, DVD. Um, like I said, uh, it's very interesting, and you don't want to watch it in the dark by yourself. Yep. So, And last chance, Bruce, to sing. <laughs> Give me the stage. Well, if you want I, to know, sing. Gonna, I, know, I know it's going to happen. I'm going to start singing. You're going to do what all the other hosts do. You're going to cut me off. <laughs> I get a couple of words out and then the phone goes dead. I know you guys. You're not going to get me this time. <laughs> I, I, I'm wise. You, you know, I enjoyed myself, guys. It's great being with you. Uh, I enjoy being on your show. Well, we, we enjoy having you come on, too. So any anytime you want, just let us know. We'll let you come right on with us. So... The uh, summer wind. Yeah, there he goes. And the blowing in from across the sea. They legal there. 
that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> But you sang. Yay. <laughs> all right. At least you did that oh, on geez. ours. Oh, oh, now I'm going to be inundated with all them phone calls and requests. <laughs> I, I, I know I shouldn't have done that. Now, now you know that uh, Rock's going to hear that, and you're going to have to sing for him now. So, <laughs> All right. Uh, this is uh, yeah. Henry Foister. Jeffrey Gould. Barbara Duncan. And Cat Cloco. And we will see you next week at the same time. Good night, everybody.